Hey everybody, today we're going to match some green screen footage with some background footage. Now this isn't uh, an actual colour correction tutorial as such as far as um, it would not be your finished product but this, th what this does is it actually gets your video closer to where you need it to be before you do your overall colour correction for your film. So this is what we're going for, something like this, this is pretty rough and ready but as you can see it's it's filled in front of a green screen, it clearly is in front of a green screen at this point because it hasn't been completely colour corrected but when you see the original footage you'll see how much difference it, it can actually make when you uh, change things around. For instance, um, I'll, put, I'll drag the uh, video into the composition right now and bring it down to the timeline and you can see the original footage is very cool and, uh, and very white. Not cool as in good looking, cool as in colour, tone. Um, it's pretty simple. Now I picked this other picture, uh, I'll just drag that in as well. I picked this background pic mainly because it was completely different to my footage. Okay, so I'm just going to transform that. So if, to actually make that your footage size, all you do is right click, transform and say fit to comp. Now if that looks a bit squashed, you can just drag it. So it's like that for instance. Now we're going to put this underneath the green screen footage, so it's behind. And we're going to draw, what well first we're going to do is key this out. So I'm going to explain how to key this out to maximum effect as well. So we click on, make sure you select your green screen footage, as in your green footage you've done. Uh, now I filmed this green screen shot um, just with even lighting. There was no shadows on me as such, which doesn't match the original footage. Uh, sorry, the background footage that we're going to put in place. So we'll be doing a little bit of that as well. But before we do key it out, we're going to actually draw a mask around the footage. And the footage only goes for 10 seconds. So I'm just going to get the overall movement of the whole footage. It's just me looking around. And I bring the gun forward. And that's probably the highest point there for the gun. And the lowest point down the bottom. So what we're going to do is just draw a mask around that. So you click the little mask tool up the top here. Select it around here. Make sure your green screen footage layer is selected. And just click it off like this. You can just scroll through, make sure that nothing crosses the footage or moves past the footage. And it looks pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to key it out. So you click on effect, keying, color key, get the dropper tool here and select the green area. First, before we do that though, we're going to just going to turn off the dunes picture behind using the little eye point here, just turns it on and off so we can see what we're doing. Go back to, and you can get, you select your green screen footage layer again, and you can click this little transparency thing here, and it will give you an idea of how this looks. Okay, so get your eyedropper tool again, select the green, and it disappears. Now, if you look at that footage, you might think it's okay, and it's not too bad, but it's not perfect. So what we need to do now is go up to here for the view area and click on change final result to screen mat. Screen mat shows you the blacks and whites of your image. It makes it very simple. Now the black is transparent and the white becomes see-through. So if there's any black in your white, that'll become you, that area will become see-through. If there's any white in your black, that area will show up as green flecks on your footage. So you go over to screen pre, uh, sorry, screen mat over here, select clip black, and just drag that back until you can't see any white flecks in your black. Then select clip white, and just drag that forward so you can't see any white in your black, or black in your white. And just make sure that you don't do it too much. Get these, these are actual gaps in the arm movement. If you go too far, sorry, wrong one. If you go too far, it'll do silly things like this. So you can see around here and around here, there's a bit of shadow. So you just clip that back a bit, get rid of the gray basically. So now when you scroll through, you can see it's pretty good. You clip back up here to the view mode again and go final result, and there's your footage. You can click off the transparency here as well, and you see you've got an edge around your video. If you click the, trans the actual background again, you'll see this edge around your footage. 
Now we obviously that edge we want to get rid of. So you can go to the screen shrink grow here on your on your effects. Make sure that, as I said, make sure you, get, you actually select the tear light and just drag that back until that edge just disappears, just like that. So you've got no jagged lines. You do it too much, you'll end up shrinking your footage down too much. Okay. That gives you a pretty even key. You can do a bit of pre-blur as well and maybe click it up here and make it one or something like that. But what that does actually feathers out the edges and that's fine in most cases but if it looks a bit too feathery like my example that I actually made a mistake with before when I showed you my example you can see the edges are a bit feathery it doesn't work as well. So you've got to be careful how much you give it. But you can always do that later if you've got an issue. Okay so there's your footage standing on a mountain and the background is very, very, very red. So what we need to do now is click on your green screen footage again, and we're going to color correct it to match it with your background footage, just so it gets close. So when you actually color correct your whole video at the end, you'll be able to uh, get an even color through the whole lot. Once you do an overall color correction, it really comes together. But this is just to get you on your way. This is almost like a beginner's guide. So you click on effect up here, click on color correction, and go to levels. Now with your levels down here, you've got uh, RGB. Now RGB is the overall lightness of your image. So if you scroll that backwards and forwards, it just brings the overall, it's basically your um, contrast. So it brings your brightness up and down. If you click on, obviously you want to click on the colors. So you click on red first. And there's your red arrow here. If you just drag that along, you can turn, give yourself some reds and so on. If you go the other way, it goes green. This way, you go left, it goes red. Just want to move towards your reds. Try and get as close as you can to the background footage, for instance. Like so. And you want to click on your green. Now, there's not much green in this footage, so we really want to move away from that. If we go towards to the green, it's going to look a bit funny. We're just trying to match it with the background at the moment. In fact, I'll probably just leave the green alone. Go back to your red again. Bring your red up. And you go blue, and just bring your blue, whichever way you want to go with your blue, you want to bring it to the right. So now we're talking, it's getting a sort of a closer feel to what's behind you. Let's wait for my computer to catch up for some reason. As you can see, the footage isn't bad. You've still got a bit of an edge around here, which we can have a look at in a minute. But you could almost get away with that if you clicked off that. You could almost say that's probably enough. And in this case, it probably would be enough. But as you can see here, you've got a lot of shadow here and a lot of light on the right-hand side. So the light's actually coming from this side. And since I didn't film it that way, ideally you would film your actor lit from to match the background lighting so you can match it in later. But when you can't do that kind of thing, when it's a quick shot like this, you can pretty much get away with um, adding a virtual light. So what you want to do is you want to click on your green screen footage, and you want to click on the toggle modes down here if, you're, uh, if your 3D square isn't showing up, that 3D block there. Make your layer a 3D layer. Once it's 3D, you can actually shine light on it. I've got the wrong jumper on for this, obviously, that's why it's all speckly. It's probably not the best key, but we'll live with that for now. Okay, so now you've got this, uh, you've got this, um, this three-dimensional layer now, just your, three, your green screen footage is three-dimensional. So you go layer, new, light. We're going to go spot on this one, and the colour will pick in a minute. Okay, now this is your direction of where your light goes. And these are how far away you actually have your light. Since it's sunlight, you're going to put it up roughly the direction of where that light's coming from, which is up here somewhere. And you want to make it so some of you is in shadow and some of you isn't in shadow. So it looks like when you turn to the 
into the sort of uh, cave area, it's shadow, and when you turn back out, it's sun. Now technically this isn't correct because the sun's coming from behind, sort of, but for this shot you probably get away with it. Now you can go down here to your light, and you can go to your light options. Now the colour, you can actually pick the colour of your light, which is really cool. So if you actually picked an area in the cave, you go very orange. But that's the correct light, technically. You can then drop your intensity back to much less, and then you can move it over where you want to move it. But in this case, that light is too dark. I would actually probably go over here somewhere like this. Then you can play with your intensity up and down to get it how you want. If you turn that off, the footage looked like that before. Okay, probably still isn't right. So we're going to turn the intensity up a bit more. About there. And now we've got, when I look to the inside of the cave, I'm slightly in shadow. Probably about there. And when I look out, I'm facing the light. That's a fairly decent match. It's not perfect. It's nowhere near perfect, actually. You can spend hours doing this sort of stuff, but this gives you an idea of where you need to be before you continue on. Now, we've still got that bit of a sharp edge around that masking. So we're going to go to Effect. So make sure you've selected your green screen footage layer. Go Effect, Matte, and go Simple Choker. Now, if we scroll that in, you can see that edge is a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. So you can actually choke it down a little bit. Like if you choked it all the way down, you'd get that. If you go too much, so it's much better now. But if I actually went too much, you would actually choke yourself down. I just lost about 20 kilos, which is awesome, but it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> and I've got the weirdest shaved head, but it doesn't help anybody. So if you go back to normal, where it was, which was zero, here for instance, this is where it was, you can scroll it up, and you've got this sort of rough edge. Now, what key light does, it automatically changes that. That's spill suppression, so it changes that edge to match, to a grey, to sort of match your footage. It's quite good that it does that, but in this case, it's a bit rough. So you just want to drag it up a little bit, just keep going to you. Get rid of that little bit of edge. Don't have to go all the way, just enough to make it a bit more realistic. And when you scroll it out, it's a much smoother edge now. If you do too much, you'll notice funny things around your footage. So just be careful. Like if I, that was a 93, so if this changes back to zero again, I fill out a little bit. So I'd probably make it uh, 0.50. Just as you see the edges sort of got sort of lighter as I did that, maybe 0.75. And that's about it. I hope this helps. That's a, that's a very quick tutorial. I know it's not uh, it's not the best you've seen out there, maybe, I don't know. But the simple thing is that this is a quick way to get your footage to match your background uh, as quick as you can. So when you do your overall colour correction, it matches in better. If I'd left that completely white, for instance, um, it just would if I left it the original how it was, it would have been completely horrible. So the best best way to do these things is sorry, do a bit of colour correction as you go to match your footage in and play with it if you if you can or if you want. Um, and then do the rest later on. Um, so anyway, hope this helps. Thank you very much and subscribe and like if you want to see more of our vids. See ya.